Good afternoon, Fred friends. It is a Friday afternoon. It is just coming up to 2 p.m. Uh, I finished at 1.30 today. No, in fact, I was home before 1.30 today. So I've got a little bit of spare time, so I'm going to crack on with another project. And um, again, lovely, lovely guitar. It is double unbucker strap, Fender, of course, uh, USA made. Don't know the exact model, not really concerned with the exact model. Pretty decent locking tuners, regular cycloback knot, which I really like, um, which I'm going to come back to this in a minute. But anyway, beautiful looking thing, three way switch. I uh, don't know what it's like because it came without strings, so I don't know what it sounds like. It's a two, it's a fulcrum type tremolo, uh, two pin jobby or two posts. I'm going to set this float in, uh, well, actually pull it a little bit forward so we can get some backward pull and some forward movement or dive bomb movement. Beautiful, beautiful thing. And it's from a returning client, a new client. Um, first came to me last month, did a guitar of his, ended up refretting one he wanted leveling. Is absolutely over the moon with it. So sent me another one. This is coming, this needs a fret level. He wants a new nut put in on it. I'm gonna get back to the nut in a minute. And the setup, so that is it. Not too expensive. With a new nut being fitted on there, we're gonna be looking at about 150 pounds. Uh, with the complete fret level and the setup, and blah blah blah. Um, yeah, so getting back to the nut, he's having a uh, GraphTech nut put on there. GraphTech Tusk TUSQ, man made, man made ivory, or, or, or a man made version of ivory. Good nuts in their own right, but I don't think it's any better than what's already on there. This cycloback nut, so uh, I'm going to try and remove this really uh, cleanly because. These cycloback nuts, I actually buy blanks and I carve my own. But if I can get this out clean, I can possibly use this again. So I'm going to try and get that out clean. And to get it out clean, I'm probably going to have to just cut inside, in case it's glued in. But I should be able to just tap that out quite cleanly, quite nicely. So all being well, that will happen. So that's it, pretty straightforward. Um, nice looking guitar, does want a bit of a clean. Shame we aren't strings on it, I could have had a play on it, couldn't I? But you know, we'll do that, we'll get a play on it later. So I'm gonna whip, probably whip the neck off, get that nut off, and we're gonna level the frets. So a tuners are gonna come off as well. We'll uh, we'll use its own uh, neck plate and, and screws and we'll, we'll bolt this to a piece of MDF and make it easier to level the frets and of course, taking the, the neck off, we're not going to damage the body with a file or anything, are we? So uh, I'm going to crack on with that, I'm going to move on a little bit and I'll come back show you the progress and um, see, I'm going to see if we can get that nut out clean there. I'll show you the progress as we get there and uh, back soon. Looking at serial numbers is not something I always do. I kind of look to find out where the guitar was made but that's about it. But uh, just took the neck off and there you go, there's a name stamp in there, Hernandez. Uh, means even though it's a US guitar, probably made in Mexico, as a lot of them are, but it has a date stamp in there. July 31st, 2014, so it's a 2014 model, or 2015, yeah, it's 2014. There you go, beautiful. So next off, that's it, just wanted to show that little bit of information. <coughs> Excuse me, that's not coronavirus by the way, if anything, it's coke virus. There you go, see what I did there? For those of you who don't know, Corona was a brand of um, soda, or what we call fizzy pop in England. Uh, back in the 60s, 70s, we used to get delivered. We used to get delivered Saturday morning. We used to love a pop band coming round. Coronavirus, there you go. Or Corona pop. Fuck but Corona pop, don't you? Anyway, back soon. Not always a good part to film this because they don't always go right, but I'm going to attempt to remove this nut cleanly. So I'm going to take a blade. I can cut, cut through the lacquer now. There is lacquer on there, look, because there's a bit there I can just peel off. Well, you can see that. So I'm just going to, again, cut into where the lacquer is and this side. And on the edges here, because the nut has been sprayed over. So there you go, I'm just trying, there you go. And all I'm going to do now is take my fretting hammer and I'm just going to take, that's not the hammer, that's a hammer. I'm just going to take a small screwdriver and just knock underneath and just try and get this to remove cleanly. And there you go, that knot is removed 
super cleanly. I've dropped it on the floor, that's okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to get my nut slot files. It should be a 3mm. And I do have a safe edge at the bottom there on this one. I'm just going to go inside and we're just going to remove that excess glue. And that's it really. Quite a bit of glue in here in this slot, so I'm going to just get in my screwdriver, just take a bit of that out. And again, not the safe edge this time, I'm going to go in with the file, I'm going to hold it there, and I'm just going to, with the file, I'm just going to remove that glue. It's an exact 3mm width file, this. It is, this is what it's for. That's how it's actually for a knot. And that looks absolutely fine. So, I'm going to grab the graphite graph knot. Just see if it fits. If not, we'll sand it until it does fit. Now this is going to need this little nib taking off because I'm sure it's not a flat knot. And it does kind of, it almost fits. Won't take a lot of work to get that to fit. It's a little bit wider than the slot. Don't really want to widen the slot. It's not something we do. No, that slot's fine. It is 3mm anyway. We will sand the knot. So there you go, that knot came out really, really cleanly, which is fantastic. That means I can use that one again. Superb. So, with a nut off, I have a neck bolted using its own neck plate to a piece of 30mm thick MDF, which I've purposely drilled for this purpose. I also support underneath the heel uh, with some uh, old business cards all taped together so it gives me some up and down movements at this end and that means I can alter the truss rod until I get the neck perfectly straight as it is right now. A quick check. Might be a tiny tiny bit of back bow in it because we're a little bit... there you go. But what that enables me to do is get some business cards under this end until the neck is perfectly straight and I could go up or down just need a, bit, a few more than that and there you go that's now fully supported the neck is what we call dead straight and that's fine I can now work on the neck how good's that so I can now level the frets from me now I've not checked the frets but we're going to level and profile them anyway um, I will go across with fret rocker, but once I know what radius it is, and I'm going to hope it's a nine and a half, nine and a half inch radius, because that makes things a lot easier, because I've got a nine and a half inch radius block already, sanded it up, it's got sandpaper on it and everything, that's ready, we're nine and a half, and that is just beautiful, we're really pleased about that, because our radius beam with sandpaper already on it, and it's nine and a half inch radius. Last two I did with seven and a half, seven and a quarter. But there you go. Nine and a half inch radius beam. Look at that. Already got 240 grit on it. So uh a zoot across with fret rocker. Check that everything's level or not level or whatever. And we're gonna come across, we're gonna pen all these up. In fact I'm gonna pen them up right now. In fact now I'll do it in a minute. Now what we'll do it now. Let's try it now. I'm just going to zoot across with a radius beam. I don't know, I could just level with a uh, leveling beam rather than a radius block, but because the radius block's already got sandpaper on it, and it matches the radius we're looking for, we might as well just do it and see where we are. All being well, we can get this one done this afternoon. And that'll mean I've done two fret levels this week, and I'll be quite happy with that. 
and I prefer to do three. It's just I've been so busy this week. I've had to go to hospital. And I've done some long shifts at Royal Mail. But today, fantastic. I finished. I was home for half one today. That's what I wanted. If I could be at half one every day, come and do a guitar, it'd be fantastic. So there we go. Uh, I'm going to zoot across with Fret, fret Rocker and come across with the sanding beam. I'm going to get these leveled and we'll come back. I'll come back when we're ready to profile them. And that didn't take too much doing to get them leveled like I thought it wouldn't. Uh, what we're always looking for is a uniform flatness across the frets. And we're a little let, there's some spots here, not quite as much flatness as on this side or at this end. So we're just going to go across again and we're going to concentrate on this end. But we're looking for that uniform radius across the whole length of the neck. And I think we're just about there. And that looks pretty good to me. So what we're going to do is we're going to brush that off. Where's my brush? Here it is. And we're just going to check the level. And now we have a uniform radius across the whole length of the neck. It's not rare to find that a neck has a slight twist in it on a strat, normally down to, oddly, treble side. Not a great concern because you can work around a twist pretty much, okay, or a little bit of a twist, but it's quite common. Frets are level. That's beautiful, really, really good. So I'm not going to mark them up yet. What I am going to do is we're going to clean the fingerboard. I may even give it a spray naphtha. Um, we don't get that for in England, but we do get Zippo lighter fluid, same stuff. So if you ever hear anybody on a video say clean your board with some naphtha, or some Zippo lighter fluid, I bought four tins of this for about eight quid a couple of years ago, still got three tins left. But anyway, here's some naphtha. And this will slightly dry the wood out, clean everything, and it will evaporate. This will get rid of any crap. So now we can tape up the fingerboard. I use three different widths of tape 24mm, 19mm, and 6mm. What I'm going to do first is I'm tape the edges. Now, this masking tape is really low tack, this fat stuff, but reason we do this it means it's easier to remove the tape at the end because you pull this off and it lifts all these up for you so we're just gonna oh, I don't know if good is it supposed to smell good? I have no idea it's called tape this it's very really really low tack and it's really thin I like it So with the uh, edges all taped up, we can just concentrate on taping up between the frets and you know, it can become self-apparent as to why I use three different widths 
the tape. Let's get this stuff, the wide stuff we need for this end. And we can get some piece, a couple of pieces and overlap. And we can save by ripping some down the middle. And you get where we go over that. And then we get to these bits over here, where it's slightly too wide, again rip down the middle. And that way, any filing or anything we do, we're not going to cut into the wood. We're going to protect where we're going to file the frets. Because that's where we need to be working, on the frets, not on the wood. And if we slip with a file, we're not going to ding the wood, are we? And I always, if the neck's removable, always remove the neck. Because when we're working at the uh, heel end, if we slip with a file, ding the body, it's going to, we've got, we've got to put that right. You're not going to ding the body when it's not on the body. So if you've got a removable neck, always remove the neck. But anyway, this is why we use different widths of paper. It becomes self-evident in a minute, because the gaps get smaller, so we use smaller tape. And here, for instance, I can use this right up to probably 10, 11, 12 fret if I want to, but then I'm going to come in with some, uh, some thinner stuff at this end. I think you get the idea now. I think you see how it works. And there you go. When we, when we get up right up to the dusty end, we'll be using the six mil. So I'm going to crack on and get this all done. And when it's done, I'm going to mark up these frets. Recrown them. What I mean is, where we've now flattened them, we're going to put that crown back in, going that way. So anyway, I'm going to get this all ready. Once it's ready, um, I'll come. Out, I'll show you how to crown a couple of frets, and then I'll crack on and get it done. Frets are now levelled, so we're going to recrown. By recrown, I mean we've levelled them this way, and it means going across in this cross section area. We've flattened the frets, and we're going to rebuild that crown in there, going this way. So imagine a, a C shape upside. Oh, it's a C shape on its side or a D shape like a D turn 90 degrees and we're looking for that so what I'm going to do is I'm going to use two files I've got my trusty Studemac Z file here which is a wonderful piece of kit cost me 125 quid worth every penny it has a short side and a long side flip it 180 degrees it has a long side oh, let's do it this way long side short side short side long side and what this does is this will not touch the top of a fret but it will carve each side and it creates a lovely crown, like that. Um, diamond file, I don't know how long it's been last, it costs 125 quid, I've already got the money's worth out of it. But it's so simple to use. Three strokes here, forward and back. Three strokes forward and back, we've got a lovely thin black line down the centre. And all we're going to do then is we're going to take the profiling file. I think I got this from uh, Tentech Luthier Supplies. A year ago it wasn't, wasn't expensive 20 odd quid and again already got the groove cut in there just to even anything out if there's any uh, burrs or anything and there you go and we've left a nice black line down the center meaning we've not cut the top which means we've not reduced any height and we can check it with a fret rocker no height gone and that's why we use this file it's amazing it saves so much time Again, I'll show one more. Always clean the file up for use. Tidy it up. You see that nice black line down the centre. I know we've not lost any height. 
So that's it, the frets are going to stay level, we're going to be flipping it and recrime. I'm going to crack on, get all the others done, and once that's done, we can move on to polishing. Moving on, uh, frets leveled, frets recrime. Now we're going to move to the polishing stage. I've got here some 400 grit, and this is probably a bit too coarse for polishing, but I do like to do the first run with some 400. Normally what I'm going to, what I'm going to do first is I'm going to roll over the beveled edges just to soften them up a bit because we have touched the beveled edges by leveling. So we're just going to roll over with some 400 grit just to soften them edges up a bit. And I'll do the whole length of the neck, both sides. Now I'm just doing this to show the camera, once I've done that, I'm also going to go just across the top first run because we put scratches in this way. So with the 400 grit we're going to start to remove those scratches and we're going to be quite coarse but it's going to give us a head start for when we get to the finer grit. So I'm going to soften the edges of the bevels. First run uh, we've already got rid of a load of them scratches so it's going to make the job a lot easier down the line. I've got six different grits of paper down here all lined up 600 through 2000. You've got 600, 800, 1000, 1200, 1500, 2000. It's probably just off camera now, you can't really see it. Take my word for it, it's all there. So that's it, that's what I'm going to do. It's going to take me a while. Once I've gone over with the six grit, well, seven grits of paper, including this 400. I will finish off with finest grade super fine steel wool. Now, I like using steel wool, especially on a neck where it will remove more neck because you're not going to get any filings or anything in the pickles. Now, if the neck was on the guitar, I'd probably use rubbers rather than uh, polishing rubbers rather than steel wool. But if I did use steel wool, I would obviously cover the pickles with, with tape so we don't get any filings in there. But this is what's good about removing more neck. You can finish off with steel water and bring them the frets up to a beautiful shine. They're better than rubbers. So why do we polish frets? Well obviously to remove scratches. Two reasons to remove scratches and to bring them to a nice shine. It's not just about shining. But anyway. That's that side done. I'm going to turn the neck round, do the other side. I'm going to crack on with this. And uh, I'll come back show you the results in a bit. Not far off being done now. I've just got to polish with um, steel wool. Gone through the grits of paper, seven grits in all. All I need to do with the steel wool is well, first I go up the bevels, like so. That is going to slightly scratch the edges this way, the wrong way. But that's okay because we're going to polish them out anyway. It just gives a nice polish on the edges. Again, these little touches, and then straight over. It's that simple. And let me show you. You can see these, but it really is this simple. Right over the top, and pinching the uh, steel wool to get right into the corner. See the filings at the edge there, but they are, they are amazing. They look absolutely beautiful, glass-like. So it's going to take me a while to get these done. So I'm going to crack on, get them done, and what I'll do is I'll do that, peel the tape off, we'll get some uh, mineral oil on the wood, and I'll come back and show you how fantastic these frets look. Best part of the job this, peeling the tape off. Just before I do do that, just a delivery from Amazon, been waiting for these. Early balls. There's six sets of strings there. Ordered them yesterday. Ordered them on Prime, here today. Fantastic stuff, but anyway, peeling off the tape. This is the best thing about the polishing. And this is why, you'll see now why I tape the sides. You see, you tape the sides, and what you do is you can pull this up then, and then you can just remove all of that in one go. Look, how fantastic is that? And the frets look fantastic. Yeah. It does rip off sometimes, but it's still really easy to grab this tape. I'm not using my right hand because I snapped my nail back today. I'm a postman, I work for Royal Mail. And I snapped my nail right back and it can be a right swine, well it was a right swine, it's a bastard actually. But anyway, there you go. I can rip all that off in one go, like so. And again, come this side. So 
And these fresh look, they look astoundingly good. So good. Uh. Take this was quite a sticker. If you're thinking of keeping your nails, fingernails, don't ever become a postman because you'll lose them. Because you keep dobbing post boxes all day long, they crack and split and whatever. I take multivitamins and everything, and I still lose my fingernails. But anyway, look at that, they look fantastic. Let me just show how good they are. Just wonderful. Beautiful. We're gonna give a quick spray of lemon oil, mineral oil, especially formulated for guitar necks, ebony, power ferro, rosewood. Plenty on there. I'll let that soak in 10 15 minutes. Any grime, any, any dirt, or, what, or whatever will soak out of that. I'll let that do its stuff 15 minutes. I'm gonna take the dog for a walk. While that's doing its stuff, give about 10, 15, 20. Well, it could be off. I'm going to be out with the dog, so it's going to be half an hour, probably longer. But let that get on with it. Once that's done, wipe it all off. We can come back and get that nut fitted. We can get this one finished. Fantastic news. Welcome back, guys. We let the oil soak in. It soaked in for actually, I said 15, 20 minutes. It soaked in for a couple of hours because me and my dog went for a walk and we went to the pub. And we're back from a pub and the next part of the job is fitting the nut. So the nut was too wide for the nut slot. So what we did was we got some flat sandpaper, sanded the nut back. We also had to make sure the radius was right, which it wasn't. And how we get a radius right is we'll take some sandpaper, we'll secure the sandpaper. Now you're not going to say I'm going to get my hand out of the way just to show how we do it. But normally I'd secure the sandpaper like so, and I'd move the knot backwards and forwards to get the radius on there. And then we'll just go across left and right, make sure we have the radius perfect. And we'll place the knot in, and you will see that the knot fits superbly. It is snug. Sorry, there, snug, snug. Now we know the knot's too high, you can see that from there, but that's okay. We're going to get this glued in and we'll cut the nut uh, to the right height um, a little bit later on. Welcome back guys, and I'm going to apologise here because I've zoomed off on this guitar. I've done a lot more without filming than I normally would do, and that's because I'm, I'm working two jobs. I work for Raw Mail, and uh, obviously I do the guitars, and I've had so much on lately you know, it's just, I get stuck into what I'm doing and uh, before I know it, I've done, I've zoomed off and I did exactly the same with this. And last time I saw this guitar, I would just oil the neck or the fingerboard after doing all the frets and all the fret work. Since then, um, I think you saw me glue the nut in, but I've also, I've put the neck back on the guitar. Um, I, I, I was preparing to cut the slots on the nut, so I had to go and set the guitar up. So I've got it all to tension tighten the strings, um, I've set the relief, I've done the radius uh, on the saddles, uh, the only thing I've not done is, is the intonation, but the setup is done, I've got the strings exactly where I need them, I've got the right amount of relief, I've got the radius done on the saddles, and I've gone and cut the depth of the nut slots, as you can probably just see here. So I don't have a lot more to do. What I'm doing right now is I'm just checking certain things uh, making sure the nut slots are where I want them to be. The guitar may not be in tune. It was to pitch, but it stood a couple of days because I've been busy on other stuff. Now it's still in tune. So that's good. So I'm just going to check the nut slots and what I, where I like to measure is 
first fret, the space between the top of a fret and the bottom of a string, probably about 0.3 millimeters this side and about 0.2 that side. And we'd slightly just lower going down that way. We could go lower if we wanted to, but I think that's pretty good. I quite like it there. Uh, it keeps everything in nice tune as well. So let's go to 0.3, there's a 0.3. We're just looking for that buzz. Probably about 0.25 would be good around the middle string. So let's go in 0.25. And we're just looking for a little buzz as we get there. On this side again. Probably 0.2 down at the treble end. Try and find a 0.2, nice thin one. And there you go, so we're not sliced at all nice and deep. So we still need to shape that knot. I'm just going to check the radius at this end again because it doesn't look quite right to me. Maybe I didn't do that, maybe I just did everything else. Nine and a half. That radius is bang on. So I've set the radius on the saddle. The only thing I've not done is set the intonation. So I can do that now. Keen eyed among you, see I've left some excess on the strings. That's because once I loosen these, they tend to snap where they join the post. And what I do is I'm going to pull a little bit more through uh, because I've put wraps around there. Um, we can loosen some of the wraps and we can get some fresh string and it's not going to snap. Anyway, we're going to do the intonation. I'll explain more about that when I do it. I'll show you exactly what I do. Intonation is perfect. Really, but saying that's not perfect at all, it's perfect on the low edge, really, really flat there. So let's have a look, and that's good because it means I've actually got to set the intonation. That's good. Flat on the D. That's not. I must have set the intonation because it's perfect. Sounds a bit flat. Just get it on. Oh, well, oh, it's okay. E is definitely flat. So if it's flat, we're going to move a saddle toward the neck, or we're going to move the saddle left as I look at it. That's the way I remember. Um, if a note is flat, we go to the left, both four letters. If a note is sharp, we go to the right, both five letters. Right and sharp are five, left and flat are four. So I need to move the saddle toward the neck, as is normal. Draw a strap. There you go, perfect. So the intonation is perfect. Just need to check the string height at the 12th fret. If I'm happy with that, what I really need to do now is carve the knot, shape the knot, stretch the strings. Well, 
this fact of strings, we're going to retune the guitar from scratch anyway. So I'm looking about 1.75mm around here, 1.75 on the low and about 1.5 on the high. We're a little bit a little bit lower than we ought to be, but if we've got no string buzz anyway. Fine, so there's no buzz anyway, so I'm quite happy with that, so I'm going to leave that where it is. You know, the tremolo is also more or less set. I'll show you if I can. I can't show you from there. I can try and get in there. There you go. Can you see the tremolo? I've got leading forwards a bit, business cards underneath. That's exactly how I want it set in, so we can get some pullback and we can get some dive bomb. And... Uh Yeah, all sounds very good. So I'm going to loosen the strings, I'm going to shape the nut, I will bring you in for that to show you exactly how I do it, and then we can get this guitar finished off. So cutting the nut, I mean the nut is already done, all I've got to do now is shape it. I'm using two files, I'm using this one because it's one of the sharpest files, and it cuts a lot of material in one go, and I'm using this one because it's a super smooth file. Um, it's the number four cut, it is so smooth, but again, so sharp. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to be shaping the top of the nut, uh, bringing this over is about two thirds of a string in and one third sticking out of the top on the bass strings and the treble strings they can all go into the slots fully so I'm going to cut more off this side than I am this side but I'm going to try and get a nice shape to it I will round over the edges as well I'm concentrating more on the treble side Doesn't take a lot of work on these um, GraphTech Tusk knots. Moving them up slightly angled back, but not too much, not as much as it is when you first buy them. I think the angle was a little bit too much. Okay, I'm just checking what we've done. That's looking pretty good. I'm going to grab a welder's cleaning tip or welder's cleaning files if I can find them. There they are. We're going to get something that roughly matches the slot and we're just going to clear the slots just so we can see where we are. We don't want to go too deep but we don't want to leave the slots. Oh, that's looking pretty good. Just to show you what I'm talking about. Walders tip files or welding tip files. But some people say they cut nuts with these, cut nuts lots. I let me tell you now, no you don't. Because these don't really fire well at all. They will shape an already cut slot, but they will not cut a slot in bone or anything. Because I've tried it and they're really quite useless as files, I'll be honest. So there you go, I'm just checking the slots. It's not too bad there. You get something that roughly matches the one the string thickness. And that That's just about where I need it all to be. So I'm just going to one more check. 
Just get back on that number 10. Not quite happy with how it is at the moment. It's a slightly bigger gauge. I just want to scrape any, if there's any rubbish in there. And that looks pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. I'm quite happy with the depth of these ones. Yeah, that's pretty good. So we're going to look now at shaping. I'm going to use the other file. This has a safe edge there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove any burrs from this side without cutting into the tape or the wood. Fingerboard, by wood I mean fingerboard. Now it's going to round over the edges. Just giving not some shape. I'm going to get them where the camera is. Sorry about that, but needs must. So that, that's it. Give it a squirt of lemon oil. In fact, I won't give it a squirt, I'll get some on my finger. Just run it across, just so we get a bit of lube in there. Not that we need lube on these nuts, they are self lubricating nuts. I'm going to go back in with these small files, one that roughly matches the gauge of string. I'm just going to clean the slots. That's a bit too wide for that one. Two more to do. Very finicky to work with these sometimes. Let's go with this one. And the last one. And there we go, the knot is cut. That's quite, quite happy with that. I'm very happy with that. And there you go, that's it. So all I need to do now, you get the strings back on. We're going to re-do the strings from scratch. Uh, because like I say, I've left some wraps on there. I'm going to remove the wraps and we're going to set these um, locking tuners as they ought to be. Back in a minute. Okay, so let's explain why I did extra rounds around the poles um, doing the mock setup on this guitar. And there's a very good reason for it. When you use these locking tuners, I find that if you tighten your strings and you need to loosen them again, you tighten them again, they tend to snap where the bend is. So what I do is I put an extra one in while I'm doing a mock-up setup. And then what I can do is, let me show you, wind it right back. And if I retuned again, it's probably going to snap right on this corner here where it joins. So what I do is, I loosen. And I loosen the lock. And I pull it through more. Then I re-lock. And that way we're bending it in a completely fresh area. It's 
bend that up out of the way. We're bending in a completely fresh area, but still getting a good turn on there. Well, I still like to get a wrap, at least one wrap around there. But now we're clamping on a fresh piece of string where before it was just wrapped around and then we can cut off the excess. And then we can do the same with the next one. And you see we're there, if I tighten it there again, it's probably gonna snap there. So what we do is, pull through a little bit extra, retighten. And then we are, that's probably got too much there. I forgot I got this wrapped round. What I'm gonna do with this one is, I'm going to pull quite a bit more from We've got a completely fresh bit of string. We're going to start winding on a fresh bit of string. And that way, we're not already, we're not clamping down a piece of string that's already been clamped once and is weakened or compromised. Strength is compromised. And that way, you see, we've got a fresh piece of string. We can still get a wrap around there. Place. And we're still getting a three quarter wrap around each post. And it's just the way I do it. I've had it a few times where I've done a mock set up and then I've gone to clamp a string again or gone to tie a string and it snaps straight on that bit. You end up using two sets of strings this way, you end up using one fresh set of strings. These are strings supplied by the owner of the guitar. There you go. Fresh clamping area, pull up out of the way, and tighten. You might as well stay there for the duration now, aren't you? But that knot is looking great now. just getting everything all tidied up. Next one. So because you missed quite a bit of this being set up properly, you can you got a bit of bonus here. I'm actually showing you this. Now these are the ones that normally snap because it's already compromised on this area. So what we need to do is we need to pull it into a fresh area that's not been clamped before and it's not already weakened. Pull through, nice fresh bit of string. And there you go, can you see exactly what I'm getting out of there? Pull that one up out of the way. And again, fresh bit of string where it's not been clamped before, it's not been weakened, it's not been bent, it's just been around the post. Pay attention to how I've cut the strings. These are all in the slots here, just at the top, and this one a little bit sticking out. Nicely shaped knot. It's so like stabbing right in the finger, I didn't yelp. You know why? So you to get stabbed in the finger by string ends now. I'm not a fan of looking tuners. I think I've mentioned that a few times before. All you get is less wraps. I like wraps around poles. Me.
there you go springs are on all i need to do now is stretch the strings in i want to get them really really stretched because i need to set the tremolo and uh, once they're fully stretched we can get the tremolo set up so i'm going to leave the camera running while you're here i'm going to kiss my finger where i stabbed it because i've got some blood running out of the way there anyway So I'm going to flip the guitar, make sure the tuners are all tight, very good, right okay. Zoom out a little. Thing. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's not a bad camera angle at all. Get rid of these string ends while I'm here. You can see the whole guitar, which is what I want you to see. And what we're going to do is, with the tremolo set as it is, with the springs, the claw spring really tight, it's tighter than it needs to be, I'm going to stretch the strings because this is the final resting place of the tremolo where we are right now. And so I need these all the stretch out of the strings. So when I do set the tune in, it is perfectly in tune. And when we use a tremolo, it's going to return to pitch. If we don't have a string stretched, it will never return to perfect pitch. It'll always be out. So we're going to stretch the strings. I'm going to start here. I'm just going to pull on the string and just stretch it. We're not going to go mental. Just going to put, the good thing about having a tremolo is a tremolo is going to pull back and give us some as you can see anyway, we're not going to snap a string. I like to give a couple of stretches on the bass strings, maybe even three. Two's going to be enough because that's almost there. Anyway, I'm going to finish this off camera. Once all the strings are stretched, or I think it's stretched enough, we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how I set the tremolo. Okay, I'm zoomed right out. I'm just going to drop the camera a little bit, just so you can see everything I'm doing. I'm not going to be zooming in. I'm going to leave the camera zoomed right out so you get the full panoramic lens. I've got actually wide lens on this camera. And that's because I want to show you everything. So setting this tremolo. Now what we do is, I've already explained, what we do is we get some business cards underneath to set the tremolo how we want it, because that's going to give us pullback and dive form. Um, so that's all set, that's all done. Uh, I've tightened up the spring claw more than it needs to be. Uh, so once I remove these business cards, the tremolo is going to spring back and it's going to go all out of tune. But what we do is, all we need to do is loosen those claw springs until we have the tuning, or one of the strings in tune, and we should all fall in tune. I'm going to check the radius of this again in a minute. I can do it once I've set the tremolo, actually, because I've moved that forward, so it may be a little bit lower. But what we're going to do is we're going to remove the business cards, like so, and that has pulled right forwards again. So everything will be super sharp. That's not really true, because it's not plugged in. That's probably enough sharp for a G now. Look at that, that's nearly a G. I don't know if you can see. So what we need to do is to get this back to tune, we're gonna loosen these claw springs and drop that back into an E. 
So I'm going to be quite brutal, I'm going to take a nice big screwdriver and I'm going to back these screws right off. You'll notice there are five springs in and you're thinking that's way too many springs and I'd have thought that but I've been assured by the end of this guitar that these are low tension springs specifically built for this guitar and it enables you to have four five springs in there. So there you go, so I'm showing what I'm doing here. You can see I'm just loosening these two claw springs so I'm going to pluck a string and you can hear the pitch drop in. And again, so I've just did that, done that just to show you and now I'm going to I'll back these off too far because the strings are going to fly off. They feel a bit loose to me, I'll be honest. But everything's flat, which is brilliant. I'm going to tighten everything up. Everything is now sharp, so we're just going to back off a little bit more. Still sharp. Treble strings are still sharp. Base strings are flat, treble or sharp. So let's have a look. I'm going to slightly modify this because that's not in as much as it ought to be. So I'm going to retune from here, retune and stretch from here. I'm going to do two high strings. What's something on this? Let's get the balance right. Do the two high strings and the bass E. And then you do the G. Then the A. You check where your springs are. I'm liking where they are at the moment. I'm just going to just test them for tightness. That's pretty good. So I'm going to check again. And there you go, we have the guitar perfectly in tune, strings to tension, we have the tremolo raised so we can pull back and so we can dive bomb obviously, we have the action where we need it and we have the guitar tuned in. That is exactly what we want so I'm going to go and check everything, I'm going to get the back plate on there and then I'm going to come back and we're going to tie this video up. And here we are, all done. And uh, what a lovely guitar, American made, year 2014, two humbucker strap, 
three-way switch, uh, two, uh, a fulcrum tremolo, two-point tremolo. Got that floating nice, angled slightly forward so we can get some pullback and we get some complete dive bomb. Beautiful guitar, uh, brand new nut on there as requested by the owner. Didn't need to change the other one but he wanted a tuss nut put in there so we've put one in. Um, it's had a complete fret level and profile. Really, really beautiful, feels fantastic. Uh, looks great, and that's it. I've mentioned everything else that's been done. Complete setup, new nut, blah de blah blah blah. You've seen most of the stuff on the video. Some stuff I didn't film because I zoomed off. Uh, being having two jobs, working for Royal Mail and doing guitars, I don't have as much time as I'd like to do guitars uh, right now. Not that I'm complaining. Uh, I love both jobs, uh, and it's great to have one that offsets the other, so I can come back from one and do something else. I really want to do it. I'm, I'm always fresh for my job at Royal Mail and I'm certainly always fresh for working on guitars when I've worked at Royal Mail because I'm getting out of the house which is the main reason I went and got a job but anyway what a beautiful guitar I've just finished just altering the height of the pickups and leveling them off I like these three screw pickups because you can alter them left and right or up and down per side and uh, that's fantastic so there you go all good to go back plate on every nut bolt and screw has been checked and tightened where needed um, Strings on here are a, crack. I can't remember, is it a 44, nine and a half hybrid set, Ernie Balls, I think it is, uh, as requested by the owner. He sends them in the case and that's it, it is all finished. I've just sent him the bill, uh, but the project is done. So I'm going to move on to the next one. Plenty of stuff up there on the board, plenty of stuff to do, plenty of people waiting to bring guitars in. I've told them, look, I'll be in touch, blah, blah, blah. I've got at least three, four people to ring up and say, bring your guitar. Uh, but that's the way it is at the moment. So without further ado, we're going to crack on, move on to the next one. Um, just remind you of my website before I go, facebook.com forward slash NG17. That's facebook.com forward slash N-G-O-N-E-S-E-V-E-N. You can also check fretfriend.co.uk if you want, even though I don't really do anything on that site at the moment. It does need a lot of work. But that is it until the next one. So as always, uh, I am Vic. I am your fret friend. Um, until the next time, God bless you. Be good to each other. And I will see you in the next one.